Our fifth learning objective is a very important one, internal rate of return used heavily in industry. In this case, we're looking for the rate at which my NPV equals zero, the rate at which my discounted cash inflows equals my cash outflow. This is the fifth method for valuing major capital investments, heavily used in industry uh, for the past 20 or so years, and will continue to be used heavily. There are some drawbacks to the IRR, however. Uh, this is the rate at which my discounted cash inflows equals my cash outflow, the discount rate in effect that makes the MPV of an investment zero. And uh, again, we want to look at a hurdle from the CFO. She will say, well, all, all future projects of uh, equal risk have to jump over our hurdle or our target um, cost of capital of say 15%. If your project jumps over that hurdle, we will accept it. If your project IRR goes under that hurdle, we will reject it and you'll be an unhappy camper. And here's an example. So when you see the letters IRR, you want to write down uh, on the piece of paper when you're doing the calculation or type it into Excel, MPV equals zero equals. When you see IRR type, but write that down, MPV equals zero equals. Minus the first cash outflow, plus the first cash inflow over one plus R, plus second cash inflow over one plus R squared, plus third cash inflow over one plus R cubed, and so on. And then solve this equation for R. Again, know the mathematics first. Second, learn how to type it into your scientific calculator. Third, learn how to type it into your financial calculator. Fourth, uh, which has all these functions built in, it has an IRR key right on it. And fifth, learn to type it into Excel in the raw mathematical format, and then fifth, type it into Excel using the Excel function at IRR uh, and learn how to do that. Uh, it's very, very simple. And uh, would I use all these methods in practice? Yes, I did. Uh, whenever I was doing a 50 or 100 or $200 million project, I wanted to make sure that answer was right. So I would test it five different ways. I would do it mathematically. I would uh, do it on a scientific calculator. I'd do it on a financial calculator and I'd do it in Lotus 1, 2, 3 or Excel um, to make sure that I was getting the correct answer. Uh, all of these instruments will give you one correct answer. There may be multiple IRRs in practice, so that's one thing you want to look out for. And we'll go over the conditions under which that happens. This initial investment is 100, and it will uh, turn back to the, let's say, 100 million, and the, uh, it will turn back to the CFO 60 million in year one and 60 million in year two. And the question is, what is the percent internal rate of return? Does it jump over her hurdle rate of 15%? Uh, in this case, so what do I do right away? MPV equals zero equals minus 100 plus 60 over 1 plus R plus 60 over 1 plus R squared equals zero because we said MPV equals zero. Find the rate at which my uh, discounted cash inflows equals my cash outflow. And uh, we start an MPV profile. So we start uh, tr guessing and checking, plugging and chugging, as my students like to say. We plug in a zero percent. Is that the IRR? And the answer is no because the MPV comes out at 20 is 5%. So I plug in 5% in for the R and see if I get a, an answer of MPV equals zero. And the answer is no, I get an MPV of 11. So 5% is not the IRR. Is 10% the IRR? I plug that in and I get a, a, an MPV of 4.13 million. So the answer, no, 10%. And keep on going 15%, 20% and create this MPV profile. And we see that the uh, the uh, IRR comes in at about 13.1% on this project if those cash flows are correct. Uh, so those are estimates, those are our best guesses, and in this case, it would not jump over the CFO's hurdle rate, so this project would, would get rejected. Uh, here's another example. Project costs 435.44, and this could be a million dollars. That's a cash outflow today. It brings in 100, 100 million the first year, 200 million the second year, and 300 million the third year. The required return is 18%. Uh, what shall we do with this project? Shall we accept that? So when we want to do the IRR, we write down MPV equals zero equals minus 435.44 initial cash outflow plus 100 over 1 plus R plus 200 over 1 plus R squared plus 300 over 1 plus R cubed. Set, uh, do an MP, do a um, um, profile, MPV profile, plug in different percentages, 0%, 5%, 10%, 15%, 20% for R and see what your MPV is. And we want the point where uh, MPV equals zero. And in this case, the CFO has an 18% hurdle rate, and this one comes in at a, at a uh, IRR of 15%. So uh, MPV is negative at 18%. We would reject this project also. 
How do we do an IR calculation in Excel? Very simply, we list the cash flows, the negative cash flow first, and then the, the positive cash flows. And off to the side, we put uh, enter in an, a, a function um, that's built into Excel, equal IRR colon, uh, paren B2 uh, colon B6. And that scans all the cash flows. It iterates. It does the exact math we just went over. And it iterates back and forth, and it finds the, the rate at which MPV equals zero, which in this case is 27.2%. So um, again, Excel can be a great tool in calculating the internal rate of return very quickly. Problems can arise, though, with the IR, so it has some uh, detriments you want to be careful of, especially if we have non-conventional cash flows, which go minus plus minus. First of all, the CFO doesn't like to see this. CFO likes to see minus cash outflow today, then plus, 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 plus. Uh, if you come in with some cash flows of minus plus minus, she will be um, suspicious right away. But let's test it out and see what can happen. In this case, uh, so again, we write MPV equals zero equals minus the first cash outflow minus 60 plus 155 in plus a minus 100. And again, we discount that minus 100 by 1 plus R squared. So it's minus 60 plus 155 over 1 plus R. Uh, minus 100 over 1 plus R squared, and we find that there can be multiple rates of return uh, with these non-conventional cash flows. When they, when they go minus plus minus, these are called non-conventional cash flows. Be very wary, and the CFO is probably not going to like the picture just as soon as you step in the door. Uh, you, you do the MPV profile, you start plugging in 0%, 10%, 20%, and see what the MPV profile curve looks like. And you see where it passes through the x-axis at zero, where MPV equals zero. And you can see in this case there are two points uh, the, uh, where the uh, MPV is zero, and that is at 25%, and a 33 and a third percent. So in this case we have two IRRs, and this can happen with multiple uh, with uh, non-conventional cash flows where you have positive, negative, positive, negative, that sort of thing. So be very wary using IRR in this case. Um, so Descartes' rule of sign tells us that you might be careful. You might have several IRRs. You might have one IRR. You might have none. Um, so here's another example of um, non-conventional cash flows. You're requesting $51 million from the CFO. Uh, today, and for that, you'll give him back 100 million in year one and a negative 50 in year two. Again, we have non conventional cash flows. Uh, we may have two IRRs, we may have one IRR, we may have no IRRs. Be very, very careful. There could be more than one IRR. In this case, I do the same thing. I say MPV equals zero equals minus 51 uh, plus 100 over 1 plus R minus 50 over 1 plus R squared, and I solve, and there may be uh, one. Uh, in this case, there are none, surprisingly. So take that uh, home and try that out. See if you can find an IRR for these non-conventional cash flows in 9.5. You're not going to find one. It's very, very, uh, it's impossible in this case, in this rare case. So Descartes' rule of sign tells us that the maximum possible number of IRRs is equal to the number of times that the signs, uh, that the uh, cash flows change sign. So if they change sign twice, you might have two IRRs, you might have one, you might have none in that rare case that we just showed. So that's problem number one with IRRs. Be careful with non-conventional cash flows. Uh, problem number two, be careful with mutually exclusive projects where you might uh, have a piece of property and you're going to decide to either put a, a new, uh, let's say, Sonic, or you might put an apartment building. You can't do both. You can either put the Sonic on that site or an apartment building. You can't do both. If you take X, Project X, you can't take Project Y. If you take Project Y, you can't take Project X. These things are uh, not mutually exclusive. Uh, and they are said to be independent. So which one is better, X or Y, is the question. Obviously, the, the best way to look is to look at the NPV. Be careful with the IRR with mutually exclusive projects. Uh, let's say, here's an example, both of these cost $100,000 and they have the various cash flows, which are different. Uh, investment A pays off a little uh, earlier and then uh, Investment B starts uh, slowly and pays off later. And the question is, which is a better investment? They both cost the same. Uh, the IRR in investment A is 24%. The IRR uh, in investment B is 21%. So by with an IRR decision point, we would take uh, investment A because it jumps over the hurdle better and higher. Um, but the question is, when you do the MPV profile and draw these curves on the uh, XY axis, uh, with MPV up the y-axis and uh, rate out the x-axis, that's your MPV profile graph, you see that these two independent, these two mutually exclusive uh, projects may cross over, where you take uh, investment B at lower rates and then investment A at higher rates. 
So you have to be careful. Uh, in this case, they cross over at 11.1%, and you can find that by doing a third column uh, and take uh, B minus A. So you take, in, uh, uh, back at that, in that last table, you take all the B values minus the A values and create a third column called uh, B minus A, and then do an uh, IRR on the third column uh, to find the indifference point. So uh, you can see from this chart, that um, at low discount rates, we'll choose investment B. BBB has the uh, higher NPV, and then it crosses over at about 11.1%. And then you can see that at uh, higher discount rates, we'll take investment A, AAA at 15% and higher, or actually 11.1% and higher beyond that crossover point. Um, don't rank mutually exclusive projects based on their returns. Their internal rates of return could be misleading. Always look at MPV when looking at mutually exclusives. Here's an example, 9.7. Um, two different projects, can't do both of them. One costs 400 million, one costs 500 million, and they uh, turn, turn out uh, different cash inflows to you. Which one is better? Should we take investment A or investment B? These are mutually exclusive. So again, we take uh, columns, create a third column called B minus A, watch the sign. So in, in time zero, it's uh, 500 minus 500 minus uh, minus 400. So you get a negative 100 when you do B minus A. Uh, on year one, you take 320 minus 250. That's equal to 70. And in year two, you take um, 340 minus 280, and that's equal to 60. And uh, again, you do an IRR on that uh, third column. So MPV equals zero equals minus 100 plus 70 over one plus R plus 60 over one plus R squared. And you get an internal rate of return of 20%. So this is the crossover point for those two mutually exclusive projects. And we're indifferent between the two at 20%. Again, always use IRR when you have mutually exclusive projects. Internal rate of return, very popular in practice. Uh, used heavily with and uh, separate from and with the MPV. Uh, oftentimes leading to identical solutions. Very easy to communicate, but be careful when you have uh, mutually exclusive uh, projects and be careful when you have non-conventional cash flows. Use MPV in that case. To address some of the problems that arise with our IRR, like multiple IRRs, we're going to look at how do we calculate a modified IRR. Uh, this is becoming uh, increasingly used in industry. Again, we don't want to go into the CFO's office with two internal rates of return. Uh, she's interested in getting one to learn to learn what our return on our investment is on a particular project. So especially in a case where we have non-conventional cash flows that go minus plus minus, we could have as many as two IRRs according to Descartes' rule of sign. So to mitigate that, we will look at three methods for calculating a modified IRR. First, the discounting method, where I take uh, that negative cash flow in year two and bring it back to today. I discount it at the company's required rate of return and add that to the initial cash outflow. And then I take my um, cash inflow of 155 and divide by one plus the IRR, one plus the rate and solve for R. In this case, my internal rate of return using the discounting method uh, of modified IRR is 19.74%. Uh, second, I can use a reinvestment method where I uh, take my uh, first cash inflow and my second cash outflow and move those all out to year number two and then discount those back at one plus the IRR squared. So now I'm, I'm reinvesting the monies out to the second year. And in this case, I calculate an IRR of 19.72% will make my MPV equal zero. And the third method is to combine the two. I can uh, take the initial cash uh, outflow, then take the second cash outflow in year two and bring it back to today by discounting it by one plus the required rate of return, and then simply discounting my um, 155, first of all, taking it out to year two and then discounting it back by one plus sum rate squared. Uh, so th this combinational method combines the discounting and reinvestment methods. And in this case, I get a, a close IRR of 19.87%. So all three of these are fairly close and they provide you with one answer on these non-conventional cash flows instead of two different IRRs, which can be very confusing to the chief financial officer.